spacecraft to the Rosviet module on the Earth-facing port of the International Space Station's Russian segment about an hour and 20 minutes ago. On board that Soyuz vehicle, the three new residents of the International Space Station about to begin a uh, six-month tour of duty on board the International Outpost. NASA's Scott Tingle, Soyuz Commander Anton Shkaplerov of the Russian Federal Space Agency, and Norishige Kanai of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency completed a flawless two-day journey from the launch pad at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan to a textbook docking at uh, 2.39 a.m. Central Time, 3.39 a.m. Eastern Time, as the Soyuz and the International Space Station flew 253 miles over the boot of Italy. The uh, Scott Tingle, Shkaplerov, and Kanai crew are going to be met a short time from now uh, as hatches will swing open, allowing the new Expedition 54 crew of uh, the new station commander, Alexander Mazurkin, and NASA astronauts Joe Acaba and Mark Vandehei to greet them as the hatches again will swing open. That is scheduled at about 4.35 a.m. Central Time, 5.35 a.m. Eastern Time. We expect a video of that. We've seen uh, a couple of the crew members floating through the vestibule uh, between uh, the hatch to the Soyuz spacecraft and uh, the Rosviet module. Leak checks are currently being conducted on either side of the docking interface, this following uh, the hooks of the Soyuz closing on the docking mechanism of the Rosviet module about five minutes after docking earlier this morning. This is a replay of the approach uh, of the Soyuz MS-07 uh, about an hour and a half ago, as uh, in this case, uh, the Soyuz was flying uh, in proximity to the International Space Station over the desert of Algeria. Uh, it soon then crossed uh, over the northern coast of Africa and the Mediterranean en route to the final approach and link up. Again, this was a completely automated approach uh, governed by the onboard systems on the Soyuz and the Corps' automated rendezvous system. And again, here is a view from the Soyuz external camera as uh, the spacecraft closed the final few meters for contact and capture with docking occurring again at 2.39 a.m. Central Time, 3.39 a.m. Eastern Time. At this point, uh, leak checks, again, are being uh, conducted on both sides of the docking interface in preparation for the opening of the hatches that is scheduled again at 4.35 a.m. Central, 5.35 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, in attendance here in the Russian Mission Control Center, and who will be joining us shortly, is the U.S. Ambassador to Russia, Russia the Honorable John Huntsman, who will join us here uh, in our broadcast uh, studio in the Russian Mission Control Center to talk a bit about uh, activities today and the overall complexion of uh, joint uh, International Space Station cooperation. So we'll be uh, expecting the arrival of Ambassador Huntsman here a short time from now. Once uh, the hatches are open, the six uh, crew members will make their way into the Zvezda service module, as is the traditional activity for the welcoming ceremony, in which they will um, accept congratulatory calls from uh, Russian uh, officials uh, from uh, Ambassador Huntsman, from Kirk Shireman, the ISS program manager, from uh, program officials from the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, and family members of the crew members. Uh, and we'll be broadcasting all of that uh, a short time from now as the crew members gather on the balcony overlooking the ISS flight control room here at the Russian Mission Control Center. Once the hatches are open and the welcoming ceremony is completed, the six crew members will have an opportunity to receive a uh, traditional 
safety briefing from the new station commander, Alexander Mazurkin. Uh, they'll uh, be able to poke their way around various modules of the International Space Station to become familiarized with uh, their access paths to their respective Soyuz vehicles. Uh, there will be uh, a power down of the Soyuz uh, uh, systems, their internal systems, as the Soyuz will be placed on ISS power for the remainder of its stay, uh, with its departure not scheduled until June the 3rd. So uh, everything uh, continues to go very smoothly with the leak checks on both sides of the docking interface. The crew members, by the way, will uh, have a very, very long rest period uh, into uh, the rest of the day, Tuesday, and into Wednesday morning, which uh, is also typical as uh, they have a chance to catch their breath, uh, especially for the station crew of Mazurkin, Vandahai, and Akaba, who have been extremely busy with the departure of uh, three colleagues last week, the arrival of a SpaceX Dragon cargo craft uh, just a few hours after the Soyuz launch, and again, uh, today's arrival of the new Soyuz vehicle. You can see in this uh, view from a high-definition external viewer camera on the outside of the International Space Station, uh, two of the Russian spacecraft as uh, they orbit uh, the Earth, 253 miles in altitude, all of the station systems in great shape, and of course the Soyuz performed flawlessly during its two-day trek from the launch pad in Baikonur to the International Space Station. Prepare to drive. Once again, uh, here at the Russian Mission Control Center on the outskirts of Moscow, uh, the crew on orbit continues its leak checks in preparation for the anticipated opening of the hatches at about uh, 4.35 a.m. Central Time, which will be 1.35 in the afternoon here in Moscow. And it is our pleasure to be joined today by the U.S. Ambassador to Russia, the Honorable John Huntsman. Mr. Ambassador, thank you for joining us today. It's a great pleasure. Thanks for having me. Sir, the arrival of this new multinational crew to the International Space Station today is the latest chapter in this unbroken permanent human presence in space, uh, in particular the close-knit international cooperation of the United States and Russia in space exploration, again highlighted today by the arrival of the crew. Your thoughts on the importance uh, of that partnership and the example that the U.S. and Russia are setting in space exploration for the future? Oh, I think it's absolutely huge. I mean, this has been <clears throat> this has been an unbroken uh, level of collaboration since uh, 2000 between the United States and Russia, and uh, our work uh, together goes back to 1975 uh, uh, at least. And what it says to me is that um, there is a lot of uh, cachet in 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 space exploration. That brings Russia to the table, particularly during a time when our bilateral political relationship isn't perfect. We have uh, some issues we're working through, some very difficult and complicated issues. But it shows that both sides are willing to put science and the betterment of humankind before politics and diplomacy on the ground. And I think that says something very good about both countries. It has been more than 40 years since the U.S. and Russia demonstrated their joint prowess in space uh, during the historic 1975 Apollo-Soyuz mission. I understand that um, the commanders of that mission, the iconic Tom Stafford and Alexei Leonov, uh, visited your high school in Salt Lake City in 1977. What impression did that uh, visit leave with you and which has endured throughout the years? It, it, it's just unbelievable to think back now, sitting in high school at the Highland High School Auditorium 
when in 1977, you know, out of seemingly nowhere, we had a cosmonaut appear on the stage of the, sta- of the auditorium. And Tom Stafford, who I know today, I didn't know then. Uh, but the impressions that they both left behind were so enduring and indelible. I carry them with me even to this day. And they stimulated a lot of thinking about the importance of space, the stature of astronauts in society as our modern-day heroes, but also the thought deep in the Cold War at the time, 1977, that Russia and the United States could actually do something together at this level of excellence, which left such an indelible impression in my mind as I know it did a lot of other teenagers who otherwise aren't, aren't inspired or impressed by a whole lot. Mr. Ambassador, you recently met the crew that arrived at the station today uh, prior to their departure a few weeks ago for their launch site down in Kazakhstan. Scott Tingle of NASA is a captain in the U.S. Navy. You have two sons who serve in the Navy. Uh, Your thoughts on how the space program folds into service to our country and uh, what that means to you? Well, I think uh, still in the United States we revere our public servants. We revere uh, our men and women in uniform, and I can think of no level of public servant that is more respected, more revered than our astronauts. And what it does, and what it certainly did for me and does for my boys now, one of whom is an F-18 pilot in the Navy, is it, it, it causes them to see role models, flight after flight, year after year, where they reach uh, it's, it causes them to set goals and aspire to the heights that these astronauts reach. They still are tremendous role models in society today. Uh, and I think when you, come, when you look at the category of public servant, uh, astronauts still sit at the very, very top. But more than just sitting there, they inspire and they move the generation behind them, which in American society is so indispensable. And I'm so grateful for it in the lives of my own sons. And finally, sir, the uh, continuing partnership between the U.S. and Russia in space exploration is uh, certain to leave a lasting legacy uh, for other facets of society to follow. How do you see the arena of space exploration uh, playing in as a platform for the betterment for all people back on Earth? Well, the uh, arena is limitless. And when you look at uh, how we uh, benefit uh, through the science, through the practical applications, through technology, through consumer goods and services that we think are just made up uh, on Earth when, in fact, they're done in space through this level of collaboration, it's hard to imagine what lies ahead in terms of our collaboration with Russia and others and what it will mean to breakthroughs in conquering human disease and extending human life uh, and lifting human suffering that we know all too much of uh, on the face of the earth. So when you look at the future, it opens up these venues, and it just uh, it inspires the imagination in ways that few other things do. And because we don't know exactly where the future will take us, we don't in the United States, certainly they don't know uh, here in Moscow, the, the Russian government, they're willing to roll the dice and gamble that through this kind of collaboration and through furthering science and the frontiers of space, that humankind is going to benefit from that. And I think that is such uh, an impressive aspect of uh, where we are with the whole space program. Well, the new trio uh, has arrived at the International Space Station. You'll be heading up to the balcony here in the control center to have a few moments uh, to chat with them as soon as the hatches are open. But we thank you so much for your time today, Mr. Ambassador. John Huntsman, U.S. Ambassador to Russia, joining us today on our broadcast. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Good 
Thirteen sixteen recording time. Pressure. Stable seven three three. Five minutes more. I can give you your bed there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can. Yep. Mm -hmm. This is Mission Control Koryov. Uh, the crew on the uh, Soyuz MS-07 continues uh, the final check of the uh, pressurization across uh, the hatchway to the vestibule of the Rosviet module, to which uh, the Soyuz docked to at uh, 2.39 a.m. Central Time, 3.39 a.m. Eastern Time. All of that uh, has gone uh, very smoothly, and uh, the crew should be on target for the opening of the hatches uh, in about uh, 20 minutes from now, slightly less perhaps uh, than 20 minutes from now. Uh, the Soyuz now attached uh, firmly to the Rosviet module uh, with all six crew members uh, about to greet one another through the opening of the hatches, currently flying 253 miles over Central Europe as we continue to monitor the progress of the final stage of the leak checks and the equalization of pressure across uh, the hatchway into the vestibule of the Rosviet module. MCC Moscow. Go ahead. And then we're going to perform expedited equalization. Okay, let me take a look. And then work for item 14.9.3. Okay, 14.9.3, copy. I wanted to pass along information in advance because after the hatch opening, we're not going to be talking in the loops after that. We need to execute steps. Stand by. Yes, go ahead. We need to execute steps uh, per page 9-6 and turn off the comm assets. And then we will need to perform the vehicle deactivation, page 25, the start of the page in the um, orbital flight procedure. Yeah. Russian flight controllers uh, talking to Anton Shkaplerov aboard the Soyuz MS-07 spacecraft. Again, uh, they're in the final stages of uh, the checklist that will lead uh, to the opening of the hatches uh, between the two vehicles some 15 minutes from now, uh, assuming they remain on schedule. And so far, everything with the leak checks has gone flawlessly, as was the two-day rendezvous for the Soyuz from the time of its launch uh, back on Sunday afternoon to this morning's docking that uh, was that took place without a hitch 
at uh, 2.39 a.m. Central Time, 3.39 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, family members and VIPs will be gathering up in the balcony uh, of the uh, Russian flight control room here in Korolyov. Uh, they are, in fact, beginning to gather uh, in their respective seats up there uh, to uh, begin the process of gathering in place. Once the hatches are open, the uh, crew members, uh, after they have had a chance to greet one another initially, will move into the Zvezda service module, put on headsets, and prepare for the welcoming ceremony. And there's a view uh, of the balcony here in the Russian Mission Control Center. In the center of your screen is U.S. Ambassador John Huntsman, who we just uh, had the pleasure of talking to a few minutes ago. He's talking to members of uh, Scott Tingle's family who uh, traveled down to the Baikonur Cosmodrome to watch Sunday's launch, along with family members uh, of Norishige Kanai of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, and uh, Anton Shkaplerov, the Soyuz commander, who uh, watched as uh, his Soyuz craft uh, deftly made its way automatically for its link up to the Rosviet module uh, just uh, under two hours ago. Page six, de deactivation of uh, comm assets that's executed by the crew prior to opening the hatches. You will uh, execute that step, open hatches, and translate to the orbital module. Also, don't forget to install the KSD SU cap. Okay, we'll be standing by for your pressure reading. Astray MC Moscow, uh, we had a short com dropout. Do you have the pressure for us? No, we have not reported it yet. Pressure is 733. Copy, that's great. So, Delta is zero. We're opening KKT then. Opening KKT. Right now? Yes. Which page? 9-2. Here in the uh, Russian Mission Control Center in Korolyov outside Moscow, U.S. Ambassador John Huntsman uh, of, to Russia is receiving a briefing uh, from uh, folks here uh, regarding uh, the front screens here in the control center and what those data screens are representing. Again, uh, Ambassador Huntsman uh, traveled uh, to the Russian Mission Control Center here this afternoon so that he could uh, be witness to the hatch opening and the uh, union of these six crew members on board and this multinational crew that's represented. He also will have uh, a few minutes uh, to congratulate them, especially the new crew on their arrival to the International Space Station to begin what amounts to about a five and a half month mission uh, with their uh, landing now scheduled for June 3rd. The uh, landing of uh, the other three crew members, the newly formed Expedition 54 crew of Alexander Mazurkin, the station commander, and NASA astronauts Joe Acaba and Mark Vandehei is scheduled for February 28th, Kazakhstan time, uh, the evening of February 27th, back in the United States. They arrived on the International Space Station back in September. Executing um, item 9.3, Kakate should be closed. Stand by. The International Space Station is currently flying just to the north of the Baikonur Cosmodrome, from which uh, the Soyuz MS-07 spacecraft took off on Sunday afternoon, moving from northwest to southeast in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. The final stages of leak checks uh, continuing 
on board uh, the Soyuz spacecraft as uh, the process of equalizing pressure across uh, the hatchways between the Soyuz and the station's Rossviet module continues. Twenty seconds elapsed. We have removed the cloth screen. I'm Simasco. Copy. Nemo, prepare S6. Please verify that S3 is eliminated. Is S3 eliminated? Yes, it is. S6. S6 is not eliminated. I sent it. MCC Moscow. Just go ahead. Um, S6 and S4 are not eliminated. Okay, then the station crew will be opening the hatch uh, into their volume. Okay. Mission Control Koryov uh, reports uh, from the Environmental Systems Officer at Mission Control in Houston indicating that the uh, leak checks are now complete. Uh, pressure equalization checks are continuing in their final stage as uh, we are nearing the point of the opening of the hatch, first on the station side, on the Rossviet module side of the docking interface, and then the hatches will be opened on the Soyuz side, enabling the six crew members to uh, join one another for the first time. And there you see uh, the new station commander, Expedition 54 Commander Alexander Mazurkin, in the vestibule, the passageway of uh, the Rossviet module, and a good shot of uh, the hatch there that uh, will be uh, swung open a short time from now, followed by the Soyuz hatch to mark uh, the joining of these six crew members. Mazurkin, uh, Mark Vandehei, and Joe Acaba of NASA. Uh, launching last September to the station. They'll be on board until uh, the end of February. Mazurkin, uh, veteran cosmonaut, uh, will now uh, begin the process of opening the hatch on his side of the docking interface. That will be followed uh, by Anton Shkaplerov, uh, the newly arrived Soyuz commander, opening his hatch uh, to initiate the joining of uh, the six crew members who will greet one another and then make their way into the Zvezda service module for the welcoming MCC ceremony. Moscow. Go ahead. Moscow. MCC Moscow. Go ahead, sending it. KVD SU is eliminated. At 13.30.00, I sent the command. Copy.
Упавка, минута прошла, выдаю S6. One minute has elapsed. Five, six. Copy, sending. I sent it. It's not eliminated. Okay, that's good. And as uh, you can hear from uh, Russian flight controllers here in Koryov, Alexander Mazurka now using the special tool to begin the process of opening up the hatch on the station side of the docking interface. This is the Rosviet module hatch. Soon thereafter, the hatch uh, to the Soyuz vehicle will be opened by Anton Shkaplerov, who uh, was the commander for the two-day ride uh, from the launch pad at Baikonur towards a uh, smooth docking that occurred at 2.39 a.m. Central Time, 3.39 a.m. Eastern Time, not quite two hours ago. We are in a short handover uh, between uh, tracking and data relay satellites, and our communications network will be regaining uh, both uh, voice and uh, video capability from the station just a few seconds from now. And we're back now uh, with uh, a live view in the vestibule of the Rosviet module. Alexander Mazurkin, the Expedition 54 commander from the Russian Federal Space Agency, uh, double-checking uh, with flight controllers here in Koryov on the status of the pressure equalization across the hatch that will uh, lead to, first to the opening of this hatch uh, that you see behind Mazurkin, the Rosviet module hatch itself, followed by the opening of the Soyuz hatch by Anton Skaplerov.
the PEV uh, referred to by the Russian flight controllers and radioing up uh, those instructions to Mazurkin as the pressure equalization valve that should uh, enable uh, the pressure to burp just a bit across uh, the hatch interface and uh, make it more facile for uh, Mazurkin to physically open the hatch as we near uh, the reunion of uh, these six crew members who have trained together for a few years now with uh, Shkaplerov, Tingle, and Kanai about to board the International Space Station for the start of their five and a half months on the orbital laboratory. And a little uh, muscle exerted by Alexander Mazurkin as he has now opened uh, the hatch on the Rosviet module side of the docking interface. And now uh, it's Anton Shkaplerov's turn to open the hatch to Soyuz. And we'll have uh, the six crew members uh, welcome one another before they move into the Zvezda service module. Now just seconds away from the opening of the hatch on the Soyuz side of the docking interface, U.S. Ambassador to Russia John Huntsman uh, joined on the balcony of the Russian Mission Control Center by Bill Gerstenmeier, NASA's Associate Administrator for Exploration. They'll be among those uh, who will offer their congratulations to the crew members along with Russian and Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency officials just a short time from now. Once uh, the six crew members are united uh, as one uh, aboard the International Space Station just a few moments from now, and once uh, the welcoming ceremony for them is complete, uh, they will move on uh, to a 
typical series of activities uh, to complete a very long day, including a safety briefing that will be uh, provided by Alexander Mazurkin that you see here in the, your view in the Rosviet module. He's the Expedition 54 commander. Uh, the six crew members will have a joint meal together before they begin an extended rest period that will continue throughout the rest of the day, Tuesday into the early morning hours of Wednesday morning. Aboard uh, the Soyuz spacecraft, uh, the three crew members, Anton Shkaplerov, Scott Tingle of NASA, and uh, Norishige Kanai of the uh, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, JAXA, uh, will have uh, had a chance by now to remove their Sokol launch and entry suits and uh, change into more comfortable flight clothing following uh, their 48 hours uh, in a rather cramped, tight quarters of the Soyuz spacecraft that performed so well uh, with no issues whatsoever during the two-day transit from the launch pad at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. And uh, NASA astronaut Joe Acaba now in the field of view. You also saw Mark Vandehei uh, for a moment as uh, the three Expedition 54 crew members who have been on board the station since September prepare for the opening of the hatch on the Soyuz side of the docking interface right behind Alexander Mazurkin. Joe Acaba, of course, uh, in his third flight into space, his second long-duration mission aboard the International Space Station, a former educator who uh, has been on board again since September, initiating a year of education on station. Acaba will return home at the end of February and will uh, be uh, succeeded in this year of education on station by a former crewmate on the STS-119 shuttle mission years ago, Ricky Arnold, who will launch on uh, March 15th, U U.S. time for a two-day journey in his own right with NASA astronaut Drew Feustel and their uh, commander, Oleg Artemiev, who will uh, become part of Expedition 54 and remain on orbit throughout the course of the summer as uh, members of Expedition 55.
while we await uh, the final few steps in the equalization uh, procedures on the Soyuz side of the docking interface, just to recap, the Soyuz MS-07 docked uh, flawlessly to the International Space Station's Rosviet module at 2.39 a.m. Central Time, 3.39 a.m. Eastern Time, as uh, the two spacecraft flew 253 miles over the boot of Italy. Five minutes after docking, Soyuz hooks uh, closed to form a hard mate uh, between the two vehicles, and leak checks then commenced as uh, the crew members on both sides of the docking okay, interface ensured a tight yeah. seal between the two vehicles. The uh, hatch to the Rosviet module that you see there in the field of view uh, swung open about eight minutes ago, and we're standing by for the opening of the hatch on the Soyuz side by Anton Shkaplerov. As we mentioned a moment ago, uh, this is a view from the balcony of the Russian Mission Control Center here in Korolyov. Uh, in the center of your screen, uh, U.S. Ambassador to Russia, John Huntsman, uh, conversing with Bill Gerstenmeier, NASA's Associate Administrator for Exploration, as they uh, talk about uh, various topics regarding uh, the human spaceflight aspect of uh, the joint cooperation and partnership between the United States and Russia, all part of the multinational complexion of the International Space Station program. The uh, crew members, once uh, on board, uh, will begin a complex series of scientific research. In fact, this uh, mission of uh, Shkaplerov, Tingle, and Norishige Kanai of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency was recently extended by a few weeks to a landing on June 3rd, specifically to carry out in full a uh, very uh, robust scientific program that JAXA uh, has in store for Kanai with a variety of dozens of uh, experiments that have been specifically designed for the correct uh, duration of time on orbit. So uh, this newly arrived crew will remain on board the station until they depart on June 3rd, and that will lead uh, to another short turnaround with the next crew after that, Oleg uh, Artemiev of Roscosmos and NASA astronauts Ricky Arnold and Drew Foist are launching just three days after Kanai, Tingle, and Shkaplerov depart the International Space Station next June.
And we understand from the Russian flight controllers here in Koryov that the pressure is now equalized on the Soyuz side of the docking interface. We should see the hatch on the Soyuz side behind Alexander Mazurkin open momentarily. Mark Van de Heij of NASA now in the field of view. Alexander Mazurkin was uh, jokingly applying a bit of elbow grease on his side of uh, the hatchway there. We're just seconds away from the opening of that Soyuz hatch. That will enable Mazurkin, Van de Heij, and Akaba to greet the new arrivals, that being Shkaplerov, Tingle, and Kanai. And the Soyuz hatch now swings open at uh, 1.55 p.m. Moscow time, 4.55 p.m. Central time, 5.55 a.m. Eastern time. Again, 4.55 a.m. Central, 5.55 a.m. Eastern time. The hatches now open between the two spacecraft as the International Space Station flew 253 miles off the east coast of Australia. Anton Shkaplerov first in, being greeted by Alexander Mazurkin and then Joe Acaba, Mark Van de Heij. Hey, where are you guys going? 
And Scott Tingle of NASA makes his way into the International Space Station for the first time. And Norishige Kanai now on board, all six crew members together. now uh, will make its way uh, into the Zvezda service module to put on headsets and begin uh, the welcoming ceremony to receive congratulations from Russian, American, and Japanese officials. Once again, the hatch opening uh, to the Soyuz spacecraft at 4.55 a.m. Central Time, 5.55 a.m. Eastern Time as uh, the International Space Station flew over the east coast of Australia. While the crew gathers inside the Zvezda service module for the welcoming ceremony on the balcony, Vladimir Soloviev, uh, the chief flight director, Russian side Ambassador John Huntsman, the U.S. Ambassador to Russia, Kirk Shireman, the ISS program manager, Mamoro Endo, the vice president of JAXA, set to... Uh, with you. Thank you. Well, congratulations on successful uh, ingress onto the station. Thank you very much. Right now we're going to uh, give an opportunity to speak to your friends and family. Okay. Good. Yes, thank you, loud and clear. Okay, just uh, press the mic. Just Yes, I hear you well. Uh -huh. Is it you? Well, we're congratulating you on the docking. Uh, we're glad to see you on board of the station. We're glad to see all your. Congratulations. No. Very fast. Uh, to give uh, the um, uh, 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 Three great Americans. We've got uh, friends from Russia. We've got a great friend from Japan who are part of this mission. And it's such an honor to go Marine Corps, go Army. And I have to tell uh, 
Captain Tingle that I was watching the faces of his family members uh, as that hatch opened and it brought a tear to my eye. It was the most special thing being here and feeling the emotion. Everyone is so proud of you. We congratulate you on what you're doing, not just for the people of Russia, the United States, and Japan, but for the people of the world. Congratulations. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Thanks a ton. That's incredible. ありがとうございます。これからあの、しっかり仕事ができると思いますので、え、国内でも日本でもみんな、ありがとう。ライさん、神が一です。え、素晴らしい打ち上げとえ、ドッキングおめでとう。ありがとうございます。え、スペースX13がついて、これからどんどん実験が始まると思いますが、金井さんのえ、キャッチフレーズは、え、
Everything is fine. How are you? I, you look great. You guys are um, doing a good job. Yes, the talking was smooth. Everything was automatic. That's good. Okay, we'll be looking forward to talking to you over the weekend and uh, here as well. Bye. Hello, this is Tanya speaking. How are you? You uh, all look very good.